have with number two. This will be the last video out here. And we're going to talk about improvised weapons. All right. So you're in the garden. You have garden tools. These are now your improvised weapons. First and foremost, do not attempt to do anything that you see me do on Kung Fu Habit number two. Or on TikTok, or on Instagram, or social media. I am a professional. All right? I'm just not paid like a professional. So, if you have to fight somebody with the closest thing available, it happens to be this garden claw. You know, boom, 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 block, block. This is a close quartered weapon, which means either you're going to have to let them get in close to you, or you're going to have to be the aggressor and get in close to them. You have to catch them and pull them, and then strike or catch them and pull them, spin it off, and then stab. Those are things that you're going to be able to do with this shit. Okay. So these are garden diggers. Now you can also hurt yourself, so again, please do not attempt. But for those who have taken knife fighting, you pretty much know what happens next. In and out, in and out, in and out, block, block, strike, strike, stab, stab, stab. <laughs> you get the gist. Now, there's ways you can do this. You can have one this way and one this way. So, if this is your blocking hand, bing, stab, bing, stab, or block and then stab, depending on how you feel comfortable, you can have both of them this way. Boom, 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 boom. There are children watching, so that's why I'm not pointing them that direction. So, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> okay? So understanding that everything that you touch as a martial artist has become a part of your arsenal. Now, because I don't have any money, I'm not going to break this apart, but this is also an improvised weapon. You're not going to fight with it this way. But you should know that if you unscrew this thing, you basically have mini knives. Same thing you just see me do with those, you can do with this. But you want to take them apart. You don't want to try to boom, boom with this thing. I mean, it can be done. But there's a good chance that you will probably do more damage to yourself than the person that is attacking you. Alright? Now this, this will be a little bit complicated. Because you can do it this way. But there's always the recoil. And you can do it this way, but there's always the recoil. Now, if you, like, block somebody and you want to, like, catch them, you take off fingers and shit with that, so you want to be careful. So you can probably fight better like this. Boom, boom, and swing it. Versus the other options. Now, honestly, this would be the worst weapon that you could possibly pick up. Unless you find a way to unscrew this thing fast enough. Which, with the hedge clippers, same concept. You're not going to have time. So both of these are clearly the worst weapons that you can get. But you also have to understand um, your training. This pole, you can keep your opponent at bay and keep them on this side. This thing is your lifeline. It is your best defense against the person. Keep them on this side. Boom. Pull them and hit the pole. Boom. Boom. Kick them. I'm going to keep this pole between you and them. I wish the pole was standing up better so that I could actually show you the actual use of the pole technique. However, we do have substitutes. So, this thing's going to be in your visual way, but it's there. So, you want something this thick, and you want to keep your opponent on that side. So, boom, boom, and you got to keep moving. And then throw a punch, you pull them into the pole. You know, they throw a kick, you push their kick into the floor. Because no one is completely invincible. If they're throwing a round kick, you boom, slam their leg into that. You want their knee to hit this pole, and you want to not stop. You're going to keep racking that shit until they drop. Is that um, too brutal? Then you ask yourself this. He or she attacked me. Am I in the wrong for protecting myself? Am I in the wrong for um, 
severely damaging them for the rest of their life? No, because they attacked me. I'll go back over here for a second. And again, it is Zeta Zane's birthday, so y'all swing by her channel on YouTube. Zeta underscore Zang or Zeta Zang official. And also go to her Instagram and her TikTok and wish her a happy birthday. Tell her Echo Fang Grey Wolf sent you. Anyway, to close out, fighting works on the principle of physical altercation led to by a verbal altercation or led to the fact that someone just doesn't like you. And because they don't like you, they want to fix your face. More becoming more like Picasso instead of the beautiful person that you should be. Understand that in all fights, everything is situational, everything is different, and everything around you is your weapon. If you cannot use your environment as your weapon, your teacher hasn't failed you, they just haven't taught you enough stuff. All right? Or if you have a really horrible teacher, then not only have they failed you, they also haven't taught you enough stuff. Works in many different directions. All right? Now, I understand all martial arts kind of correlate together, and some martial arts can compete against others. You know? And you just have to figure out what works best for you. Like if somebody jumped out the bush and started fighting me with capoeira, my only choice is drunken master. Without the bottle, without the whole form, just this is the sweat. All right? It's all I'm going to use. Because I'm not dropping on the ground and going into Drunken Master from Wushu to just do what I need to do to get this guy who's doing all these acrobatic shits into my life. Now, in reverse concept, if he's doing Drunken Master and I only know Capoeira, I'm going to stick with basics. I'm not going to do a whole bunch of um, Eddie Gordo or Blanca stuff. I'm going to fight like I would normally fight. Because I'm not going to sit here and try to um, teach you Hey, well, let's do some of this fancy smancy shit. Fancy smancy gets you broken up over the ground. Understand that shit. Basic moves is what you use on your fights. You can study all the martial arts you want in the world, and I promise you, you can go talk to anybody in the UFC, and they'll tell you a punch is a punch, a kick is a kick. Because you're not going to sit here and do snake in the UFC. You're not going to do that shit. That guy on the other side, he sees you breaking the snake mode, he's like, this is you, and this is him. Watch too much TV. Now, if you're super good and have been fighting with snakes since you're about six years old, okay, you might have a chance. But I'm going to be honest with you. First and foremost, there are rules in the UFC. There are rules in every sporting competition. And if you're going in for a snake thrust to the throat, it's illegal. But understand the concept of being a snake. A snake is low to the ground. A snake has only one defense, its mouth. Rattlesnake has a tail, don't do the Hollywood snake. Just stick with the snake, all right? So if you're going to do snake and you're going for the throat, because that's like its main move, you know, it's coiling, boom. You know, maybe from the side, it's coiling, boom. You know, that snake's got to turn his head to bite. It's not going to bite this way. If you're going to do that, then you're going with crane. And so your crane, it thrusts this way, your snake has to turn its head. Now, somebody's going to come on here and say, no, you're full of shit. Okay, fine. You try um, thrusting somebody in the throat and grabbing them like this. It's not going to work. All right? But knock yourself out and then show the video. Your snake is going to have to thrust and coil. So it's thrust and coil. And when it coils, it's gripping the throat. It's not gripping here. It's gripping here. Okay? Mantis, you can work with that. Boom. Because you can target anywhere up here with mantis, it's just two finger jabs. Boom! You know, one in the eye. All right, all right. Tear their ass to pieces. You can also incorporate knees in mantis. You can incorporate knees in snake. You can incorporate knees in fucking damn any animal style. And matter of fact, if y'all haven't taken a note from tie fighting yet about how dangerous a knee, an elbow, and a forearm is, and you're not changing up your martial art, then you getting your ass kicked is well deserved. All right? Kempo, I put my elbows in it and my forearms. And that's like more or less tie fighting and American kickboxing. I've had like a little bit of tie fighting and a whole lot of American kickboxing and a lot of freestyle karate. Elbows, forearms, and knees are dangerous. And tie fighters did it first. However, if you can mix up your martial arts to the point where everything flows smoothly, snake, boom. Crane, boom, dragon, 
This is actually Tiger. This is Dragon Star 2. Just making sure y'all know that. I know that. But this is Tiger. This is Dragon. But you can do Tiger down here, but Tiger actually goes up here. Okay? Mantis. Dragon. Tiger. Mantis. Snake. Crank. Alright? We're not doing the monkey shit. Okay? Just to get that out of the way. I'm not gonna dance around here looking like a monkey because my hip doesn't touch me. But I could do it at a younger point in life. Alright? But the thing about moving down here really low is that, because there is a drunken master as well as a drunken monkey, just in case y'all didn't know. But if I'm doing drunken master and I'm down here versus doing drunken monkey and I'm all over, acting like a fucking buffoon, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you too much of what you can do to me. Sorry, Falcon. <laughs> anyway, I'm giving you too much options. So if you're going to get into a fight with anybody, first thing I'm going to tell you is get into a fight stance. This is a southpaw boxing stance, but it's a Wing Chun standard stance. All right? Now, if you're left-handed, it's a school of Wing Chun standard stance. It's just a proper boxing stance for regular people who go left, left, right, which is boxing. And Wing Chun, it's more like, all right, you throw a punch, block, strike, boom, you know, that's more my defense. So again, and I'm going to say this, you guys can take it with a grain of salt, but this grain of salt has at least one gram of truth to it. Every fighting style that you have been taught, you unconsciously change it to work with your body, which is why it will never look like your sensei. It will never look like the person who taught you. It will never look like anything that you see on TV because your body is your body and it's your body alone. Everything works on your body the same as it does everybody else. You got five fingers and five toes. Some people have six. All right? But in the event, a block is still a block. Boom. It might not look as smooth as your teacher's block. Your teacher's block might be crisp. Boom. Boom. You know, you hear that bionic man noise. Boom. 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 Or he might use his feet. Boom. 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 He might even jump up in the air to a flying dragon thing. I can't jump anymore. Hip replacement. Which is why that looked kind of fucked up. So, boom. 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 You know, that's going to be a lot easier than me trying to jump through the air and fly and kick you. Plus, here's the truth. Anytime that more than one of your feet leave the ground, I pray you're only fighting one person. Because um, that person sweeps your foot, you go down. If you're up here, this foot's extended, and he just got under that bitch, and he sweeps this foot. Because this is the one hanging down, I can't freeze, but if you pause the tape while I'm up here, and he sweeps this foot, because he slid under and swooped my foot, I have two choices, depending on how my body lands. Is he going to knock the wind out of me, because I'm either going to land on my face, or I'm going to land on my back. Either way, the wind's probably going to get knocked out of me, because I'm not going to expect that shit to happen. You have to understand how fighting works. Before you get into a fight, you literally, probably, most definitely need to actually know that you can fight. And even if you can fight a little bit, you can still get beat up. And that's what happens in fights. You may win the fight, but you will get beat up in the process. Now you have to get fear out. You have to be able to turn off that fear switch of being afraid to get hit. Because face it, you're in a fight. So unless you knock that person out with that first hit, you're going to take a hit. And you better hope like fuck that you can recover from it. Alright? This is the thing about training. This is why training is important. This is why when you leave that dojo, that class starts at 6 and ends at 7. When you get home, say you got 30 minutes. Say you got home at 7.30. You go to bed at 9. You take that 7.30, 10 extra minutes. When you get out of the car, it's 7.40 now. Now you get in there and you do your drills. You start training. You start doing everything you need to do. Everything that you learn at school. Next day, you go to school, you learn something you need, you come back, you do the same damn thing. And you do it until it's second nature. When your instincts make it so that no matter what your movements do, they reflect what you've learned, you have learned what second nature is. And you will be able to manifest this at any given point in time in your life. So I hope that I taught you guys something. Again, shout out to Zayla the Zang, the, breathless, the breathless, breathlessly beautiful, dangerously sexy,
hopefully my future wife. Thank you guys for watching. It's her birthday. That's the most important part. Go to her channel, check out her shit, tell her happy birthday. Thank you guys for watching. I am Echo Fan Grey Wolf. This is Comfort Number Two. Be seeing you. Thank you for giving me 15 minutes of your time extra too. And I gotta get out of here before the rain drops.